Today we're visiting with Fishery Supervisor Jerry Weigel and we're going to talk about the fish stocking program. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Jerry, explain to our viewers what is the fish stocking program and where do these fish come from? Well, in North Dakota, we have two hatcheries. Uh, one is located up in the north central part of the state near Riverdale, the Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery. The other hatchery is over at Valley City. Both of them are U.S. Fish and Wildlife hatcheries, but we have historically worked hand in hand with the two hatcheries. And uh, in general, North Dakota is very fortunate to have a substantial production capability to uh, take advantage of the unique water opportunities that we, we, we experience here in North Dakota. Jerry, um, explain a little bit about the hatchery situation at Valley City. Well, at Valley City, uh, a couple years ago, zebra mussels were uh, first identified in Lake Ashtabula. And Lake Ashtabula is the water supply for the hatchery. And thus, last year, uh, we were able to get some production out of there pr prior to the zebra mussels becoming an issue. This year, with the extreme uh, dry winter and, and unusual uh, warm uh, temperatures, uh, the, the zebra mussel issue showed up before we could even raise any fish. So we lost all the production opportunity out of Valley City this year. This caused us to re rely solely on Garrison Dam. And so we just had to do a little reprioritizing on where we would be the most effective with uh, the, the fish stocking plans for this year. Well, let's move into fish stocking. Obviously, the bread and butter fish of North Dakota is the walleye. How many walleyes did we stock and how many lakes? We stocked right around 9 million and we stocked about 130 waters this year and again that's down because of uh, a couple things one is uh, we do we actually had to go back into Lake Sakakawea which takes a uh, you know two million fish itself and so that's uh we you know lost about 20 lakes that uh, for the most part they're lakes that that we experienced natural reproduction and or they had tremendous success the last couple of years which gives us a chance to skip uh, once in a while and not not cause any harm to the fishery. Well, and we should mention these are walleye fingerlings, not catchable right away. How long before they're catchable? Right, you know, under the best conditions in the southern part of the state, they're probably approaching catchable by the end of the second year, but for the most part, it's three years, three full growing seasons. So basically what we're stocking now is fish for the future. And so folks shouldn't get too hung up on running to see what lakes were stocked and where. Uh, and just know it's, it's, it's all for the future in replenishing uh, the, the fish that the anglers are harvesting and or natural uh, 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 loss of uh, fish. Jerry, I had the opportunity to ride along with you and you were stocking pike lakes. A lot of good shore fishing lakes. Uh, how many pike lakes and how many pike fingerlings? We stock about 50 lakes with pike, uh, northern pike, and in general there we're pretty much just targeting those lakes that are northern pike only. They're typically shallower. Uh, we do experience occasional winter summer kill in those, and we go with pike because we can we, we only need about a year of a grow, uh, growing season for them and, and they're ready for the anglers. And so we have a fast recovery. They're, and they're more tolerant of a little tougher water quality. So they're, they're, they're in no way competing with walleye or causing issues with our walleye lakes. Jerry, how about trout? Uh, we start out the season in the spring with uh, rainbow trout. And these are catchable fish. We have about 40 lakes around the stake that we do those. A big, big share of them are urban community ponds. And these are to get uh, catchable fish out there at, at ice out. So just as soon as there's open water, uh, school might be on or just be ready to get out as we've got lots of uh, opportunity in these community ponds or area lakes and the fish are ready to catch. Uh, after our catchable trout, we uh, move into stocking uh, trout in the Missouri River, which has actually been one of our best uh, trout fisheries uh, year in and year out. And so we put about 40,000 brown trout and rainbow trout in there. And then we move on to uh, Chinook salmon. And this year we are up a little bit, a little over 400,000 salmon went into Lake Sakakawea. Jerry, any other fish species that come out of the hatchery? If not, why not? 
uh, way, uh, historically, before we had all the water and the demand for walleye, we would certainly do uh, substantial numbers of largemouth bass, some bluegills, crappie, and even yellow perch over the years. But with the demand for walleye fingerlings and the competition for hatchery ponds, we've shifted to addressing those production needs by relocating adult fish from uh, lakes with excess uh, fish and taking advantage of their natural spawning ability when we relocate them to a new lake. And, and it's actually worked quite well. Uh, many of the uh, perch fisheries that folks are taking advantage of now did not come from the hatchery. They came from adult fish that were relocated and then they spawn naturally in that lake and provide the fishery. With all this fish stocking, Jerry, from walleye to pike to trout, how do anglers benefit from this? Well, we get asked the question, Mike, when we uh, are ship stocking fish at a lake and they see, uh, you know, really substantial numbers going in because they're such a small size, how many of those are going to make it? And in general, we say all we need to have make it are what's coming out of the lake and dying naturally, which isn't a very big number. So we're after creating fish for the future. And a good way for folks to uh, see this for themselves is when they're out there fishing and they're catching those seven or 10 inch walleyes. Those small fish too small to keep, you wanna see that. That is your fish for the future. And fishing, it's fair to say, fishing's probably never ever been better in North Dakota than now. It, exactly, and that is, uh, 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 two things are making that happen. First, we need the water uh, across the prairie, and we are riding a high. We have more water, more fishing lakes, uh, up, upwards of 450 lakes, where we traditionally only had a couple hundred public fishing waters. And then the other big component is uh, hatchery production ability to be able to meet and, and, and keep those lakes stocked and replenished so that the angling isn't just a good once every 10 years and the lake is fished out. We can sustain most all the lakes in North Dakota to keep the fishing great year after year. Jerry, we're kind of in a drought. How is that gonna affect things? The good thing is, is folks just have to think back about 18 months and we were as wet as we've ever been in this state. So the drought is definitely gonna have some effect, but I think it's gonna be uh, minimal. It just depends how long it, it hangs on. It's gonna, it's gonna take a few years to really start to affect our fisheries. Uh, you know, the good news is right now, what it's doing is lowering the water level, which is concentrating the fish, which is only make the fishing better. Okay, many, many opportunities out there for people, even if you don't have a boat to go fishing. Absolutely. Uh, between the shore fishing opportunities, lots of fishing piers throughout the state to get access to uh, uh, fish from uh, shore. And then our boating access crews are uh, trying to, are constantly adding new boat ramps to some of these new lakes to spread out some of this traffic so that we don't have the over, any over harvest issues, which we're, we, we don't experience in North Dakota. And great resources on our Game of Fish website. We try to have everything out there, the fish that are stocked, maps of the lakes, uh, what they can expect to catch, uh, where they can go if they're after certain species. We try to steer them as best we can. A lot of great information, Jerry, thank you. You bet.